Hey guys, I hope you're having a good one, and I wanted to give you my thoughts on the latest episode of Rebels being Legacy of Mandalore. Basically part two of Trials of the Dark Saber that we had to wait a month for. Still a little salty. Just a little. Tiny bit salty. Anyways. This was not as good of an episode, I think, as Trials of the Dark Saber. And I think that that was kind of unavoidable. The first 15 minutes of this episode address four of the five major things that they needed to address. They needed to explain to us Sabine's mother, Ursula. They needed to explain to us her brother, Tristan. They needed to explain to us where her dad is and what he's up to. They needed to explain where Mandalore is right now in terms of uh, social and political climate and cultural climate even, because you know every 40 seconds during the Clone Wars, they went from pacifists to Klingons to everything in between. And because we've been waiting 17 years to figure out what's going on with Mandalore, uh, both as a culture and as a political power within the galaxy. They had to explain all of those four things, and then I'm a little disappointed that they didn't get to the fifth thing that I think needed to be explained, which was what Sabine did exactly. What did she design? Why did she design it? In other words, how did the Empire lie to her? in order to get her to design this weapon. What was the weapon capable of doing? And then what did the weapon actually do to scare the crap out of Mandalorians enough to get them to agree to have Gar Saxon be put into power? Or rather, at least to keep the Mandalorians down uh, and under the Emperor's thumb. And they did a good job with those four things, minus that last one, the first four. Uh, and though those slow 15 minutes of just primarily exposition and explanation of what's going on right now with Mandalore and Sabine's family and where they stand and who they are as characters is made up and excused by the last seven minutes of this episode being post Gar Saxon arriving uh, on this planet Kronos, I think. I can't quite tell what Sabine says. Apparently that's where the Wrens are from. They're kind of colonist Mandalorians. Uh, that and a ton of other information is at the... Um, or in the uh, Rebels Recon episode that StarWars.com put up on their official channel. I'll link that down in the description below. Go watch it. There's a ton of stuff about how Mandalorians work and uh, why Kanan knew about where the death uh, or what the Darksaber was, so on and so forth. It's, it's, a, it's a really good episode of uh, Rebels Recon. But anyways, those last seven minutes were done in such a way it just the the cinematography the music the uh the animation the writing it just it, it did a very good job of getting me pumped up and excited like it ramped from 15 minutes of kind of tedious exposition uh for and world building to straight on full on action and very emotionally invested fights, uh, such as the one in between Sabine and uh, Gar Saxon. Of those shots, I was a little bit disappointed that the ice didn't actually break because it's kind of hinted at while they're fighting on that frozen lake that the ice was going to break and it didn't. And it kind of didn't go anywhere, but eh. And But I will give them credit. They scared the crap out of me 
with that shot of that one blaster shot that goes off uh, right when Gar Saxon is down and she and Sabine say, spares him and then he, you know, gets up as she's walking away and aims a blaster at her back and you hear a blaster shot go off and there's like a two and a half seconds and three shots where it's like, no, no, they didn't. No, don't, don't you kill Sabine. Don't you do it. Oh, oh okay. Turns out Ursula, Sabine's mother, shot Gar Saxon before he could shoot her. Okay. Okay. I, I can breathe again. Because I, I, of all the characters in Rebels, I can't handle losing Hera or Sabine. I just, I, uh, and, well, okay, I could live with losing Sabine, but she has to go out like a warrior, you know? Uh, not getting shot in the back by an already defeated enemy, if that makes sense. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't handle her death that way. But anyways, um... Now, this episode does end on a down note, sort of. Sabine leaves the Rebels crew. She's staying there with her family, and they're going to work on trying to fix Mandalore and give Mandalore its independence back. I... I'm going to miss Sabine. But it looks like the whole point of that was to get the Mandalorians on their side for their attack on Lothal. So hopefully we will get more Sabine before the end of the season. Because I'm guessing that the attack on Lothal is going to either not ever take place and it'll end up... Uh, ending with an attack on Chopper Base by Grand Admiral Thrawn. And the Mandalorians will rush in and save the day with Sabine at their head, at the head of their formation. And it could, or it could end up being Sabine and uh, the Mandalorians end up do joining them for the season finale being the attack on Lothal. It'll be one of those two things because we do see more Mandalorian fighters and such. Uh, taking place. We've seen Sabine in shots within the, the season three and a half trailer. Uh, we see shots of Sabine within that trailer that is her still interacting with the Rebel crew. So we can guess that she will be coming back sometime sooner rather than later, but I'm still going to miss her. Oh, well. But anyways. Yeah, I guess that's pretty much all I have to say about that. But I would love to know what you guys thought about this episode. Leave a comment down below, or you could follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Those will be linked down in the description. Also, I'm going to start streaming on Twitch much more often, but uh, the next one will be uh, tomorrow evening, Sunday. Uh, there's always going to be a Sunday stream, and then I'm going to start streaming sporadically throughout the week. Uh, probably before work, so it'll be early afternoon. But I hope to see you guys there, and as always, may the Force be with you.